possible to real world objects. In the real world, there are some objects that when you buy, they relegate the responsibility of assembly or composition of the object to the con consumer of the object. For instance, when you buy a cell phone, there are so many things you can change about it. In the box, you get a battery that you can replace anytime. You get a SIM card, you get a USB or a data cable. You can change the carrier, the network anytime. You can have a case. So there are some objects that allow you to sort of disassemble and reassemble or reconstruct them. And some don't. But at the same time, regardless of whether the object allows the end consumer or the end user to deconstruct and recompose the object, all objects exhibit certain properties. They all allow you to screw them apart and change any of their ingredients or constituent objects. Also, most objects in our surroundings are adapted to the environment we put them in. This code doesn't exhibit any of these properties. That is because the dependencies it declares are concrete implementations and not behaviors. It says, I can only take water, or I can only work with water, which I'm going to create. It doesn't say, hey, I'm interested in a liquid. <coughs> anything that's a liquid, I would be interested in. Uh, I would be interested in anything that's powdered coffee. So this doesn't segregate the dependencies via interfaces. And the process of doing that is called interface segregation. <coughs> also, <coughs> this code is not open <coughs> for extensions. If I wanted to have a new coffee maker that could accept milk as well as hot chocolate <coughs> and make a new drink, some coffee makers do that, they accept hot chocolate, they can give you an espresso or a cappuccino or a hot chocolate. I couldn't do that. This is an adamant coffee maker. That is why, I mean, those are, that's the extent of the problems that this code has. So how do we mitigate those? Well, one way is we say, okay, one of the things that's wrong with this code is that it's creating water. Let's Let's take that responsibility and give it to somebody else. So we yank out that piece of those lines of code that were creating water and give them to a separate method. Now this method is responsible for the composition of the water object. In this case, water class is a simple class with a default constructor, so it's not really a big deal, but usually, as I just did say, it could be any object. That's not usually the case with enterprise applications. You could be making a building, and the building would have different floors, and floors would have rooms, and conference rooms, and those, those would have furniture and chairs. So once you make a building, you have the responsibility of creating everything. When you delegate the responsibility of creating an object to a certain method, this technique is known as a simple factory. The method itself is called a simple factory. So we just relegated the responsibility of object composition to a simple factory. This simple factory now creates the water but the problem remains. This method is within the coffee maker, and so the coffee maker itself is still creating water. You segregated the responsibility from the make black coffee method to another method, but it's still in the coffee maker, so it's not a real world coffee maker still. Coffee makers don't manufacture water. The thing we need to do here, could anyone maybe guess what we need to do here? What, what could be done to solve this problem, to mitigate this? Exactly. If we move this method to another class that was dedicated to just creating water, that would solve this problem. And that factory then, okay, there are different kinds of waters. There's distilled water, tap water. So maybe I want to specify that this is distilled water, so I have a distilled water factory. Now, in the coffee maker class, we don't have any creation of water going on, so that we solve that problem. And we could, again, just, just like we did for water, which I haven't shown, we could do that for ground coffee as well. We could have a ground coffee factory. <coughs> could anyone tell me what the problem with this code is? First of all, this is called the factory method. 
when you have a dedicated class for object composition of a concrete product, that technique is called a factory method. What could be wrong with this code? Or why haven't we still solved the problem we were set out for? It's still not just making water. Still dependent. It's just making water. There's no other options. There's no other objects where? There's no other options. There's no other option to make, to, to use milk or... Okay, that's, that's, okay, that's... Yeah, we haven't <coughs> segregated the dependencies. We haven't generalized the dependencies of the coffee maker. That's true. So if you were saying something. I'm saying that the knowledge is dependent. The dependency is on the distilled water. Exactly. We've just traded one dependency for another. At least <coughs> earlier, the coffee maker needed real things that a coffee maker needs, which is water and ground coffee. Now it needs some arcane <coughs> stupid factory. You don't put a factory inside a coffee maker so that it can make coffee. So this is clearly. I mean, I, I, there's nothing <coughs> right or wrong, but this definitely doesn't solve our problem either. So I, I would really put it in the wrong category. On, along the same lines, if we had a class, an abstract class called Water Factory, which had an abstract method, and then we had concrete factories for each kind of water, this pattern is called an abstract factory. Along the same lines, this wouldn't help us either. If we had an abstract factory that could create different kinds of water, that wouldn't help us to solve the problem either. And who can tell me why? Why wouldn't this help us solve the problem? Still the same dependency. Same problem. We still have a dependency on the abstract factory itself. And coffee makers definitely don't need abstract factories. So the problem really can be solved if I get the dependencies injected into the coffee maker from the outside. And the coffee maker is then freed up of object composition. The coffee maker doesn't have to make any of the decisions that are related to creating an object and can just focus on making coffee. One thing to note about dependency injection is what have I done here with dependency injection? I've made two changes to this code. First, I've generalized the types of dependencies to be behaviors rather than to be concrete implementations. This coffee maker now doesn't say, I can only work with water or ground coffee. It says, give me any liquid, I'll put it in this jar, put this liquid in this jar and put the other powdered coffee in this other thing and I'll make coffee. This technique of generalizing dependencies into behaviors rather than concrete implementations and having those dependencies come from the outside is called dependency injection. And then in the main method or the client code, in the calling code that has to use the coffee maker, the client code would compose the object, the coffee maker object, by first creating the water object and the ground coffee object, and passing it.